Good afternoon, everybody. Um, people are just coming in now, so we'll start in a minute or two. Um, you're all very welcome to um, this webinar hosted by uh, Engineers Ireland Electrical Division. Um, we're joined by uh, Balas Sari from uh, Gans Power Transformers, um, joining us from Budapest today. Really happy to, to have him here uh, for this. Um, we have 36 people in here now, so I think we'll just give it a few more minutes and then we can get going. So, Balas will uh, give us a webinar today on uh, the principles of transformer cooling and uh, go into some detail on, on um, the basics, uh, typical solutions and, and typical uh, schemes. Ballas has 22 years experience with Gantz. He's the head of the testing and quality division uh, in Gantz and uh, is also a member of a C-grade working group on con condition assessment of, of transformer windings using frequency response analysis. So with that, I will pass you over to Ballas and I hope everybody enjoys the webinar. Thank you. Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Ballas Story from Gantz uh, Transformers Hungary. And uh, I will uh, uh, present uh, a presentation today about the automatic cooling control systems of power transformers. Um, and uh, I will start my presentation from the basic uh, theory of uh, cooling uh, of transformers, uh, why the cooling is needed, uh, how we cool the transformers, and why the cooling uh, to be controlled, and how we control it, uh, what are the most typical solutions at uh, Gans Hungary. Uh, I will present, present it on uh, two examples. There will be a simple example uh, with, uh, about a very typical uh, transformer on-off uh, cooling uh, uh, control. And there will be another example where uh, other features uh, based on the customer specification will be presented. And that will be not a relay based, but a PLC based, based uh, uh, cooling uh, uh, system. And uh, at the uh, end of the presentation, uh, I will show you some um, uh, compact uh, uh, instruments and devices uh, that can uh, help uh, uh, the cooling control of power transformers. And uh, just before my presentation, I received uh, two questions uh, regarding the overloadability of transformers at uh, different ambient temperatures and the uh, operation uh, principle of the thermal image uh, uh, winding temperature indicators, uh, what is used for the temperature indication and uh, automatic uh, cooling control source of uh, power transformers. So that's uh, the content that uh, we are going to try to cover uh, today. And the duration of my presentation is planned to be uh, about 40 minutes. And uh, in the last uh, 20 minutes, I will try to uh, answer your questions. Um, and whatever cannot be answered today uh, will be uh, answered offline by emails uh, in the following uh, uh, days. So uh, why uh, the cooling is needed for the transformers? On this uh, slide, you can see a graph where the expected lifetime uh, is shown uh, versus the operating uh, temperature, the highest uh, temperature spot of the winding. And you can see uh, if the winding uh, temperature increasing uh, 10 degree, the transformer lifetime uh, drops to the half. Uh, so it's quite uh, sensitive uh, to, the, to the temperature. This example um, uh, uh, contains uh, four curves, uh, the blue, the yellow, red, and the and the black one uh, for a different uh, moisture and oxygen content of the insulation. Of course, uh, a dry and uh, oxygen free uh, insulation uh, has the lowest, uh, longest uh, expected lifetime, uh, but uh, the influence of the operating uh, hotspot temperature has the same impact uh, on that as on a wet uh, insulation. So the lifetime of the transformer strongly depends on the temperature of the insulation. And uh, as every electrical machine, the transformer uh, produces heat uh, by dissipating the, the losses in the active part. We, we know that the transformer has a, 
uh, core loss uh, due to the excitation in the magnetic core and uh, the core loss uh, becomes heat in the magnetic core of the transformer. So that is heating uh, the, the, the medium around the core, which is uh, in our uh, case, uh, insulating oil or insulating liquid. And of course, uh, due to the current density, we are also generating uh, um, copper loss. So the copper uh, is increasing the temperature and that temperature is uh, uh, transferred uh, to, the, to the oil of the transformer. So uh, the transformer uh, has to be uh, uh, cooled in order to uh, prolong and conserve its uh, lifetime and not to uh, reduce it. Um, so as I explained uh, in the copper, we dissipate uh, the uh, winding loss, the, co uh, the, the copper loss, which is load dependent. So on a high, highly loaded transformer, the uh, copper load will be higher. Um, in the iron core of the transformer, we uh, dissipate the um, iron loss, which becomes heat, and it doesn't depend on the load of the transformer, but once the transformer is energized, uh, it depends on the system voltage. So it is always uh, present. It's always a kind of heating effect. And uh, both of these uh, heating effect is transferred to the internal uh, cooling medium, which is in our case, the insulation liquid, because uh, this presentation is mainly restricted to uh, liquid immersed uh, transformers. Uh, so the, the, the primary cooling medium will be the insulation uh, oil or liquid of the transformer that circulates uh, uh, within the winding and through the cooler, as you can see on the um, uh, illustration on the right side of the screen. And uh, this heat uh, is uh, uh, transferred to the ambient uh, temperature in the, the, or ambient air in the, in the cooler externally of the transformer. So you can see the circulation in the winding. We are heating up the oil. The oil um, uh, density is uh, decreasing. So the specific weight of the oil, the higher temperature oil will be less. And due to the gravity that uh, moves uh, upwards and when it enters to the cooler uh, and it cools down, it uh, density or specific weight will be higher. So due to the gravity, it goes down to the bottom of the cooler and that will start a natural circulation in the transformer. Uh, this is the natural, the normal uh, cooling uh, principle of the transformer, and uh, this uh, will uh, result in equilibrium uh, uh, status where the um, um, temperature uh, of the transformer will uh, be stabilized on an equilibrium level. What is the equilibrium? What is the steady uh, state uh, level? If the um, heating, if the if we can see uh, this uh, slide that I'm presenting, you can see a blue arrow and a red arrow. The blue arrow is the, the cooling effect. The red is the heating effect. The cooling power is uh, increasing in the, in the cooler by uh, increasing the temperature difference between the uh, oil and the ambient air. So as the, uh, as the temperature gradient is increasing, the cooling uh, capability of the cooler will be increasing. And this is what you can see here. On the other side, uh, in the transformer, as the loading of the transformer is increasing, the loss of the transformer is increasing uh, exponentially. And that is uh, what you can see on the blue curve. So the transformer is producing the, the heat, the cooler is, is cooling uh, uh, the, the oil. And uh, on higher temperature oil, the cooling capacity or the cooling capability is, is higher. So if we put the, these two things together, there will be a crossing point, which will uh, cause the, the, which will result the, the operating temperature of the transformer. If uh, we increase the, the uh, cooling capacity, uh, then uh, we can lower this uh, point if we increase the, the heating uh, uh, loss uh, of the transformer, the equilibrium uh, temperature goes higher. The most important uh, aspect of the, of the cooling is to 
to have an efficient cooling and to cold uh, and to keep the uh, temperature of the transformer as low as possible. And uh, for this reason, we need to increase the uh, cooling power, the efficiency of the cooling system. Um, how can we um, increase it uh, uh, the most efficiently? Of course, uh, by uh, uh, increasing the, the, the difference between the oil temperature and the ambient temperature. There are some uh, design methods to, to do that. For example, positioning of the oil cooler to a higher uh, um, um, position, uh, higher height. And uh, with that, the average uh, oil temperature in the uh, cooler can be elevated. So the gradient between the oil and the ambient temperature can be higher. But of course, there are other methods uh, as well to, uh, to, to increase the efficiency or increase the cooling power uh, of the cooler uh, by using the oil pump in the transformer or uh, to increase the oil speed of the movement and uh, more intensive uh, oil movement uh, will um, result a more effective uh, uh, cooling effect. And to increase the air speed, which is uh, uh, normally naturally moving in the lamels of the radiator. But if we blow the cooling air by a, a cooling fan, then we can enforce and, uh, uh, and enforce the um, air movement and we can increase the efficiency of the, of the cooler. Um, of course, uh, th these are uh, very beneficial things to use uh, oil pump and cooling fan in the cooling system of the transformer, but there are disadvantages as well. For example, the noise em emission, because they are operated by electrical motors and the, the um, uh, uh, cooling fan is generating uh, acoustic noise, so that can disturb the environment. But uh, more important is the electrical power consumption, which will increase the operation cost of the, of the system. So if we operate the oil pump and we operate the, the cooling fan, then we are consuming uh, power from the, from the uh, electrical power. And uh, of course, it has a cost. And uh, we shouldn't forget about the ERP directive, which uh, defines a minimum uh, peak efficiency index for uh, each transformer and the peak efficiency index is affected by the power consumption of the cooling equipment. Therefore, uh, using of uh, motors in the cooling system uh, has a, uh, a negative effect as well. Um, we uh, have to optimize. So we have to judge between uh, natural cooling and uh, forced uh, cooling and optimization uh, needs uh, the cooling motors uh, to be controlled. So this is our main topic uh, today, how to control and why to control. And why to control uh, can be already uh, seen from here that if we uh, unnecessarily running the cooling uh, motors, the fans and the oil pump, however, the temperature of the transformer can be kept down, but we are uh, consuming uh, energy from the system. And uh, of course, uh, uh, by increasing the running hours of the cooling fans and the cooling pumps, the maintenance um, uh, frequency is more and more frequently uh, needed than uh, on an optimized system. Um, before we go into the details of uh, cooling control, uh, here I would like to, to, to show and to explain the four letters uh, symbol related to the uh, cooling uh, method of the transformer. Uh, since the transformer has a primary and a secondary uh, cooling uh, medium, uh, and the primary and the secondary can be naturally naturally uh, flowing by the thermosiphon effect or can be forced by oil pump or uh, cooling fans, we can have uh, several combinations of, of these letters. The first letter uh, is referring about the internal cooling medium. So if the first letter is O, that means it's an oil insulated transformer. If it's K, then it's a higher temperature class uh, insulation uh, uh, fluid. Uh, the second letter is about uh, the uh, circulation mechanism of the internal cooling, cooling medium. If it's N, then it's natural. If it's F, it's forced uh, 
cooler and if it's a D then it is uh, directed so the oil or the insulating uh, liquid is not only circulated but it is injected directly to the winding so that's the most efficient uh, way of cooling however an OD cooling system has also the disadvantages uh, if the oil pump uh, is not running, then the transformer cannot be loaded as, at all because there can be no natural uh, circulation through the OD uh, cooling channels, which are uh, completely sealed uh, cooling channels. The external cooling medium can be air or water, so cooling air or cooling water, and whether the air uh, is uh, naturally uh, moving in the radiator or forced by the cooling fan, it can uh, uh, be uh, chosen the fourth letter of this uh, symbol. So for example, an ONAN uh, cooling method means the oil is circulating naturally. So there is no oil pump, only the gravity is moving the oil inside the transformer and inside the cooler. The A means uh, the external cooling uh, uh, medium is an air, so the, the radiator is uh, transferring the heat to the ambient air, and the ambient air is moving uh, inside the radiator. If it's an ONAF uh, cooling mode, then uh, the external air is forced, uh, so a uh, fan is blowing the, the, the cooling radiator. If it's an ODAF, for example, then uh, inside the transformer we have oil. The cold oil is injected in a sealed winding uh, by oil pump and uh, the hot uh, oil is going to the cooler where the air is forced by cooling fans and so on. Uh, this was an important uh, summary before we proceed in the presentation to understand what are the different uh, cooling methods. In this presentation, I will talk mainly about ONAF uh, cooling uh, uh, system, but uh, control of oil pump will be mentioned in the second example of the presentation as well. Uh, what kind of uh, cooling principle we can, um, we can think about? So the cooling uh, uh, can be controlled based on the temperature of the transformer. That's the most uh, general uh, solution. So the temp temperature-based cooling control. Uh, the cooling fans start when the oil or winding temperature exceeds a certain level, and they will stop when uh, this uh, temperature drops under uh, a certain level. Uh, the A and B level where the fans uh, are starting and where they are stopping, they should be different. Uh, otherwise, a, a, a kind of a prelling or a very frequent uh, switching on off uh, cycles can occur. So in order to avoid uh, frequent switching on and off, uh, hysteresis is different between the A and B point to be set. Uh, the advantage of this uh, uh, temperature-based uh, uh, cooling control system is that uh, uh, regardless to the ambient uh, temperature, uh, the temperature indicators and the thermometers, which uh, provide a reference signal to the control circuit, are detecting the absolute temperature of the oil, therefore detecting the absolute temperature of the insulation. And that's the most important because that's what we want to keep uh, on lower level. Even if the ambient temperature is high and the load of the transformer is low or in a cold ambient where the transformer is uh, loaded uh, beyond the rated uh, power. Um, whatever happens, uh, uh, the, the temperature, the absolute temperature of the insulation is the most important to be kept under a certain uh, limit. Uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, there is an example. For example, if the load is uh, uh, increasing by two steps and uh, therefore that's the blue curve and uh, therefore uh, the red curve, the oil temperature is following it with a kind of exponential uh, behavior. And uh, when we are reaching the A point where the cooling fans uh, started, and from that moment, the load is not changing, the effect of the cooling fans will bring back the temperature to a certain level. And then uh, when the load is decreasing, uh, and uh, consequently the temperature is decreasing under the B uh, level, uh, the cooling fans will be uh, switched off 
and the, there is no uh, forced uh, cooling anymore, only the natural cooling of the transformer until the next uh, high uh, loading cycle. Um, what you can notice here is a kind of overshoot because there is a response time uh, after increasing the load uh, until detecting the, the oil temperature on the, on the top of the transformer. And during this uh, uh, time, this delay time, the winding temperature, which uh, uh, has a much lower uh, thermal time constant, can uh, uh, reach a higher temperature uh, um, temporarily, and that can uh, be a little bit of uh, uh, risky from uh, operation point of view, especially if the load is uh, uh, significantly uh, increasing uh, in a very uh, short time. Uh, on the other side, there is another uh, principle of cooling uh, operation, the load-based cooling operation. This is a less uh, um, a popular uh, method of um, um, cooling control. When the cooling control circuit is not monitoring the oil or winding temperature of the transformer, but it has an input signal from the current transformer, which gives an information about the load of the, of the unit. And once the load is increasing, the transformer uh, will, uh, for example, here the load is increased from this level to that, that level. The, the transformer is, is just uh, heating up exponentially, as in the previous uh, example. When we are exceeding or increasing the load from this level to the second level, at the same moment, we are also uh, switching on the fans. So the heating effect of the transformer by the, uh, by the load current and the cooling, extra cooling effect by the cooling fans, we can um, compensate each other and we can avoid uh, this kind of overshoot. So a smooth, uh, less fluctuating uh, temperature profile can be achieved. So that's the only advantage. And of course, the disadvantage of this system uh, is is that uh, this is not sensitive to the ambient temperature. So if the transformer is operated in a 40 degree ambient temperature and uh, the load is increased, only by increasing load, the, the cooling fence will be started. Or if the transformer is uh, operated at uh, zero or minus 10 degree ambient temperature, the fence will be started uh, at the same load, whereas uh, the oil and the insulation temperature can be very much different from each other, even 50 degree difference. So this solution is not really taking care of the lifetime of the transformer. However, with the sudden peaks and overshoots can be avoided. <clears throat> uh, if we uh, see the classification of the cooling uh, equipment with uh, with different uh, way, we can say that uh, there is a solution where we are switching on and off uh, the cooling fans. So it's only a, a magnetic conductor which operates and controls the, the cooling fans. Or we can uh, use in inverters or frequency converters to um, uh, regulate the speed of the cooling fans and to uh, regulate the airflow through the coolers. Again, uh, the inter inverter based uh, system has a lot of advantages. So constant temperature can be achieved by uh, uh, steplessly uh, regulating the speed of the fans and uh, the airflow in the in their radiators and uh, this uh, constant temperature or uh, less uh, fluctuating uh, oil temperature will result uh, less oil volume fluctuation, which will reduce the, the magnitude and the number of the braiding cycles. So the, the conservator uh, through the air um, um, dryers will braid less. So the risk of the uh, moisture and contamination ingress can be reduced uh, with this uh, method. And uh, by soft starting the cooling motors and always keeping them running, uh, the starting uh, current peaks can be also avoided, which is uh, also um, um, a disadvantage of the uh, switching on and off uh, uh, system. Of course, uh, this system has disadvantage as well, the expensive construction. So of course, uh, a high power frequency changer uh, 
is more expensive than the magnetic contactor in the control cabinet. Uh, the frequency converter and uh, the frequency converter needs also an electronic uh, uh, control which monitors the temperature or the load of the transformer. And due to this uh, electronics, the reliability um, of the of the system is uh, is reduced, and uh, and uh, the reason is the the difficult uh, uh, electronics, uh, which is a, a less robust uh, and uh, less and more sensitive system than the conventional uh, magnetic uh, switch uh, based system. Um, uh, as I said, the the, the disadvantage of the uh, switch control uh, fan system compared to the uh, inverter based system is that uh, the temperature fluctuation is more, but there can be a middle way if we um, use a multi stage cooling system where there are not only two conditions to switch on and off the fans, but the fans can be uh, either controlled individually or in uh, groups. So uh, depending on the on the temperature rise or the load of the transformer only the necessary number of the fans are started so with this uh, the uh, uh, cooling uh, capacity can be uh, regulated between um, between the zero or the the, the on on and the on off uh, full cooling capacity so there can be intermediate uh, stages and by uh, playing these uh, stages the temperature of the oil and winding can be kept uh, uh, constant uh, uh, regardless of the fluctuating load of, on the transformer um, similarly to the to the inverter based uh, cooling uh, control uh, the starting currents can be also uh, handled by this system if uh, there are uh, multiple uh, cooling fans in one group of cooling fans we can start the cooling fans uh, after each other by a, a delayed uh, starting. So at the same time, the starting peak current will not be present. And this is uh, again, a solution to reduce the starting current of the fans, which can be sometimes an overloading for the supply, the supplying circuit to the control cabinet. Um, and by this method, a backup cooler management can be also realized. So if we uh, have more cooler installed on the transformer than necessary to cool the transformer at the rated power, we can use uh, some coolers, some cooling pumps and fans as uh, backup or spare uh, cooling units. And in case of failure, which can be detected by the uh, motor protector uh, auxiliary contact or uh, oil flow indicator in the uh, in the um, insulating liquid uh, circuit. In this case, we can switch on the spare cooler uh, as a, a backup and the transformer can be still operated at uh, full rated power, even with uh, one or two faulty uh, uh, cooling uh, cooler items. And this solution is the, the most commonly uh, used solution at uh, at Gans uh, company. So my first example will uh, show uh, how we build and how we um, uh, operate uh, this kind of system. <clears throat> so on the example, you can see a transformer, which is equipped with uh, 10 cooling fans, five fans on uh, this side. And of course, on the other side of the transformer, there are also five fans. And uh, we uh, operate these uh, 10 cooling fans in two groups. So the multi-stage system will be, in this case, two stage. There will be uh, a condition when none of the fans are running. That's the on uh, cooling method. And we can start uh, the half of the uh, cooling uh, fans and we can uh, start the 100% of the cooling fans. So there will be uh, three uh, different cooling modes. And uh, depending on the load of the transformer, the automatic the cooling control will choose which uh, cooling mode to be used in order to keep the uh, insulation temperature as constant as possible. The sensors of this uh, system are the OTI and WTI, the oil temperature indicator and the winding temperature indicator. The oil temperature indicator is a capillary uh, a tube based uh, a thermometer where the capi very, uh, capillary uh, 
probe is placed in a thermometer pocket on the top of the transformer and the and it is uh, filled with gas and uh, due to the uh, temperature the internal pressure of this uh, gas will be increasing and that uh, pressure will uh, uh, affect a, a Bourdon uh, tube in the uh, thermometer, which will result a mechanical movement, and that will move the pointer of the thermometer. And uh, this movement can also activate micro switches, and this uh, switch operation will affect the uh, automatism of the cooling control. The WTI is the winding temperature indicator. Of course, uh, here the, the sensor is not touching the high voltage winding, but winding temperature is uh, simulated. A so-called thermal image uh, simulation is, uh, is uh, built in to that uh, thermometer. At the end of my presentation, I will uh, tell some words about the uh, operation uh, principle of the uh, thermal image winding temperature indicator. And of course, uh, the third component, uh, what you can see on the screen, is the control cabinet, which uh, accommodates the terminals of the protection uh, devices like Buhoet's relay, oil level indicator, pressure relief device, uh, and um, uh, oil surge relay of the tap changer as well. But the main function of this control cabinet is to accommodate the uh, devices of the cooling control, like the motor protectors, uh, the magnetic contractors, the terminals where the supply of the, uh, the power supply of the cooling circuit is connected, and uh, the cables of the fans are connected, as well as uh, miniature uh, circuit breakers for the overcurrent protection of the cooling uh, circuit. This transformer is uh, provided with a remote control uh, um, facility, local manual control and local automatic control. The remote control means uh, by uh, remote location, uh, by uh, switching uh, contacts, uh, we can uh, operate uh, the fans uh, from, for example, from a remote system of the control room. Uh, if it is in local, um, uh, control, then the thermometers can uh, um, uh, control the, the cooling. And uh, if we want to test the uh, operation of the fans on a cold transformer, we can switch it in manual mode and we can force uh, the fans to be operated. The remote control uh, facility gives uh, the opportunity to the user to make uh, any specific uh, uh, cooling uh, control uh, principle uh, in the SCADA system or in the um, uh, substation control system, which can um, control the, the uh, cooling fans independently from the cooling uh, circuit of the, of the transformer. So it can be a load-based control or can be temperature-based control. Uh, this is in the hand of the, of, the, of the user. But if the user doesn't have this kind of uh, remote control system, the uh, switch can be changed back to, to local control and then the transformer will take care of the control of the cooling uh, uh, system. So these uh, switches, what I was talk talking about, uh, looks like uh, this uh, at that uh, transformer. There is uh, the first switch where you can select uh, local auto or mo manual. You can select off when the cooling is uh, disabled, or you can select uh, the remote uh, function when uh, the fans can be started and stopped by a uh, remote uh, instruction. If it is in uh, local, uh, then you can select from, from these uh, four options uh, for the two uh, cooling uh, gr uh, groups. Uh, both cooling groups uh, consist of uh, five cooling fans and uh, they can be switched off, so they can be disabled or they can um, be uh, the first uh, stage of cooling uh, uh, level or they can be the second stage of cooling level. This is indicated as ONAF 1 and ONAF 2. Uh, they are designated to two different uh, oil and winding temperatures or uh, the last position of the switch is the local manual when independently from the temperature of the transformer, the fans can be uh, switched on and uh, can be used for, for, for testing or in case of thermometer failure, the operator can uh, start the cooling of the, of the transformer manually. 
In the control cabinet uh, on the top, you can see the magnetic conductor contactors. They uh, are operated with the control signal and they can uh, uh, make and break the circuit of the, of the cooling fans. The cooling fans are provided with uh, uh, motor protectors. Uh, they can um, uh, cover the uh, overcurrent production of the of the cooling fans, and they can consider the high starting current. They will not trip at the high uh, starting current, but uh, after starting, uh, after a few seconds of uh, starting up, the char characteristic of the motor protectors will take care of uh, any electrical or mechanical failure of the uh, cooling fans. Uh, then on the lower stage, there are the MCBs, the miniature circuit breakers, which uh, uh, protects the supply uh, uh, line from uh, internal uh, uh, um, overcurrent failures. Then the three switches that you could see on the left side of the screen and uh, on the bottom, the supply terminal. So that's, those are the high cross-section terminals where the supply power can be connected uh, to the cooling system of the transformer. There are other items in this uh, control cabinet, but uh, they are not uh, part of the cooling control system. The thermometers uh, uh, on the side of the transformer, if we are go going back, so, so these two are the oil and winding thermometers. The oil thermometer, as I explained, uh, 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 measures the top oil temperature of the transformer and indicates on this dial and the winding temperature uh, indicates the winding temperature on this dia dial and uh, how the winding temperature operates that I will explain later. Here uh, is uh, important uh, fact that uh, there are four micro switches in each uh, um, um, thermometers and these are the functions of the, of the micro switches. The first micro switch uh, is responsible for the on off one operation. So this will be activated at uh, 50 degree oil temperature or 70 degree winding temperature. The second um, the micro switch uh, is uh, uh, starting the second stage of the uh, cooling fans at 60 degree uh, oil temperature or at 80 degree winding temperature. And the two, two other micro switches are uh, used for protection uh, uh, purposes, uh, gives an alarm signal to the operator and to the substation when the oil temperature reaches the 95 degree, which is uh, very close to the maximum operating uh, temperature. In this case, uh, this transformer is designed for 40 degree uh, ambient temperature and uh, maximum 60 uh, Kelvin temperature rises allowed. So altogether, the maximum operating oil temperature at normal condition with, uh, without uh, losing or compromising the lifetime of the transformer is 100 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, when the oil temperature reaches uh, 95 degree, then uh, there will be an alarm signal. And uh, if there is no any intervention to reduce the load of the transformer or to increase the cooling uh, uh, capacity, the transformer will be tripped by the protection at 105 degree. And uh, it is the same for the winding temperature indicator. The alarm will come at 115 degrees Celsius and uh, the transformer will be tripped and protected at 125. You can see uh, in this case, the difference between the uh, winding and oil temperature indicator is always 20 degree. This is the assumed uh, winding to oil gradient for this specific design, but this is not uh, always the same. It depends always on the transformer design. And uh, let's see the electrical uh, uh, circuit of this uh, um, cooling control. There is a bus bar or there are two bus bars for the two uh, cooling groups, uh, which is protected with a six ampere uh, uh, three phase MCB. And uh, you can see at the uh, intersections of the bus bar, there is the Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 uh, motor protector, which can be set from 0 0.16 up to 0 0.25 ampere. And it's been set to 0 0.23 ampere, which is the rated current of the, of the cooling fans. Uh, this current is measured during the FAT on the transformer and uh, the setting is done accordingly. 
Uh, after the motor protector, you can see the three phase contacts of the magnetic uh, uh, contactor. This is which is controlled by the control circuit and uh, by um, operating this contactor, the fan can be started or stopped uh, whenever it is uh, needed. And uh, from these uh, terminals, the terminal block uh, X4, uh, an external cable, a shielded external cable, is connected uh, to the cooling fan, which is a three-phase fan uh, provided with a protective earthing as well. Uh, the local remote selector switch is very simple. So if it is in local mode, then um, on the next uh, page, uh, you will see uh, what are the functions. And if it is in a remote mode, then remotely on the X6 uh, terminal block by connecting the um, 11 and nine terminals together, the key 31 uh, uh, relay can be activated and started the first uh, stage of the cooling or the, uh, the first uh, cooling uh, group. And by uh, closing the 10 and 12 terminals, the key 32 relay can be activated, which will affect uh, on the second uh, cooler group of the transformer. So this is how to remote control the uh, coolers. And uh, when uh, the auto control mode is uh, chosen, then there are the two thermometers, what I shown uh, before, the winding temperature, in the, uh, the oil temperature indicator and the winding temperature indicator. And if the oil temperature exceeds uh, 50 degree, then the key 21 will be um, uh, activated. If uh, the winding temperature exceeds uh, 70 degree, then the same relay will be uh, operated. And if the oil or the winding temperature reaches the second stage, then the second stage of cooling will be started. So these are the key 21 and key 22. And let's see how it is in the automatism. So if it is in automatic uh, mode, then by key 21 and key 22, we can operate the first stage uh, first group or the second group of the cooler and by these uh, selector switches we can we can select whether the uh, uh, cooler is uh, uh, operates at the first uh, temperature or at the second temperature level uh, also for the second group or if we uh, choose the local manual then um, uh, independently from the position of the key uh, 21 and the key, key 22 on this circuit, we can supply uh, the key uh, uh, contactors and we can, we can operate the, the fence. Um, you can see the second uh, cooling group is, uh, is only energized by the key 19 uh, delayed uh, relay after 10 seconds so this will ensure a delay in a delayed starting of the two groups to reduce the uh, starting current peak uh, uh, instead of starting five uh, ten uh, fans at the same time we will start uh, five fans and uh, 10 seconds later the other five uh, fans so that was the first uh, example. Of course, uh, I tried to uh, explain it as much as I could, but uh, if I skipped something or you have uh, some remaining question that we can discuss at the end of the presentation. So the second example that I would like to show you is an ODAF cooling mode. So the oil is directly injected in the winding of the transformer and the oil is circulated by a oil pump and the uh, air is uh, forced uh, in these uh, uh, compact coolers. At my uh, previous example, you could see the uh, cooling fans were, were blowing a radiator hanging on the side of the transformer. But these are not radiators, these are the compact coolers, which can be more efficient uh, um, uh, cooling uh, solution. However, the natural uh, cooling of this kind of system is uh, neglectable. So uh, when we use this kind of uh, system, the, the operation of the oil pumps and oil fans are essential. Otherwise, the cooling efficiency of uh, these uh, uh, coolers uh, in the enclosure is very low. So on this transformer, uh, almost the same functions, but you can see we have uh, 10 cooling fans, we have five uh, cooling pumps, we have oil flow indicators at each uh, cooling units, uh, we have the control cabinet on the side of the transformer, and we have uh, uh, PT-100 uh, temperature sensors uh, all around the transformer. 
The PT100 temperature sensors placed on the top of the transformer uh, monitors the top oil temperature, and that is uh, the basic uh, uh, input for the cooling control. But this transformer is also provided with the PT100 temperature sensors at the input and the output of the, of the coolers and uh, on the bottom of the tank and on many different places in order to ensure or uh, provide a signal for the uh, temperature monitoring system of this transformer. Um, in the automatic uh, uh, cooling control, uh, the system is not uh, controlled by a capillary uh, tube, OTI or WTI, but uh, uh, electronic sensors are giving uh, electronic uh, um, signal to the, to the control circuit and uh, the winding temperature is also determined by uh, measuring the uh, top oil temperature and uh, reading the secondary current signal of the built-in current transformers. Um, based on the uh, customer uh, requirement, backup co uh, cooler management is also uh, considered in this cooling uh, uh, system and, uh, and, uh, and other functions as well. Since the transformer is planned to be operated most of the time by one or two uh, coolers, in order to equalize the operating hours of the coolers, the cooling control system is rotating the functions of the coolers that I will show you on the next uh, slides. And uh, if any of these coolers are faulty, then a spare uh, cooler can uh, take over the function of the faulty uh, cooler. And there is one more function, the exercising function. So in a cold uh, um, season, in the winter typically, when uh, less operation of the cooling fans and the cooling pumps, uh, pumps are required, uh, the fans and the pumps are uh, frequently or regularly operated for a short while to avoid the um, uh, uh, stacking of the of the bearings and uh, and uh, this kind of failure uh, which can occur due to non-using of these uh, machines and uh, there is a, a covering protection and emergency cooling control so of if in, in case of PLC error or uh, any problem in the uh, control uh, circuit there will be one uh, backup uh, capillary uh, uh, oil temperature uh, detector connected to the transformer, uh, which uh, will uh, start all the cooling fans when the 70 degree oil temperature is reached. So this is just a, a, a backup protection uh, in case of electronic uh, failure in the cooling control. So this is how the, the control cabinet looks like. Uh, there is a PLC with a touch screen uh, where uh, all the parametering and all the programming can be realized. And on the, on the right side of the, of the um, moving frame of the control cabinet, uh, there is a switch for supply selection because uh, these transformers are, uh, uh, the cooling controls are uh, energized or supplied from two different uh, supply. One is coming from the mains Another one is coming from the auxiliary uh, uh, medium voltage to low voltage transformer. So um, here the priority of the supply can be selected by this switch, but there is an automatic changeover circuit. If the voltage disappears from one of the supply, it will automatically divert to the other uh, supply. These are the indicator lamps, uh, which indicates which supply is, uh, is, uh, is on now. And uh, on do, those two switches, we can select whether the uh, cooling control is uh, um, operated manually, automatically, or it can be also set uh, in a test function because uh, this um, uh, cooling control also monitors the, uh, the energization of the transformer. So when the transformer is not energized, it will stop all the cooling devices. But once the transformer is switched on to the grid, it will immediately start one cooling pump because as I told you before, in an ODAF cooled transformer where the oil is directly injected in the, in the winding, there is no natural flow. So the transformer cannot be operated without uh, operating uh, oil pumps. And uh, on the bottom line, there are the five test uh, switches where manually we can uh, start the five uh, cooling blocks uh, one by one during uh, testing or uh, in case of manual operation of the cooling. 
This is how the, the monitoring uh, cabinet looks like uh, from inside. There is a data acquisition unit which uh, monitors the signal of the PT100 uh, sensors. There is a direct hotspot, uh, fiber optic based direct hotspot uh, temperature monitor as well, which is not part of the cooling control. Uh, there are the uh, terminal blocks for the PT100 thermometers, and they are uh, providing signal for the um, for the cooling control uh, electronics. And as I said, there is a backup uh, thermometer, an oil thermometer, which will only uh, start the cooler if there is a failure in the electronic control. And these are the functions. So the first. Uh, uh, so th there are uh, the five coolers and they can be set in five different uh, uh, sequence. The first uh, cooler is always uh, which is running when the transformer is, uh, is energized. So the, the, the pump of the first cooler will be uh, started when the transformer is energized uh, and it will be stopped when the transformer is switched off. When the oil temperature reaches uh, 49 degree, then the fan on the, on the same cooler will be started. And when the oil temperature drops under 47 degree, uh, the cooling fans will stop. If the oil temperature is uh, beyond uh, 41 degree, then the second cooler, the fan and the pump together will start and it will stop when the temperature comes uh, under 49 degree. The third uh, cooler will uh, uh, start when the temperature of the oil is uh, above uh, 53 degree and this cooler uh, will uh, uh, cooler unit will stop when the temperature comes under 51 degree and the fourth unit will stop at uh, start at 55 degree and stop at 53 degree uh, and uh, the number uh, five cooler is a backup cooler so this will only be started if one of these four is uh, 40. And uh, which uh, cooler is the first uh, priority, the second, the third, fourth, and the fifth is always rotated by the, by the system. And, uh, and this can be also monitored on the, on the computer screen in the uh, substation. So let's say uh, at the first configuration, the first uh, cooler bank has the uh, number one function, the second, the third, fourth and fifth, but one month later, the second cooler will have the primary cooler, which starts when the transformer is energized. In the third month, it will be the number three and so on. Uh, this is uh, in order to equalize the operation time uh, um, in the all uh, cooling units and the operating hours is also counted by the software on the screen and that can, uh, be a, a big help uh, for the maintenance and the diagnostics of this transformer. Um, and uh, as you see with the star, the, uh, the, the, the backup cooler will be started if any of these uh, coolers are uh, faulty and the fault can be detected by a tripped motor protector. So the auxiliary contact of the motor protector can give the fault signal or the oil flow indicator if the uh, starting uh, instruction or command to the um, uh, cooling pump is uh, activated, but there is no oil flow, then that cooler is considered faulty. So it will be off and the backup uh, cooled, cooler will be switched on uh, to replace the fault cooler. Yes, so this was our uh, uh, tailor-made uh, uh, cooling uh, control system uh, uh, in order to um, meet the customer uh, spe special uh, requirement but uh, these cannot be not only be realized with a very difficult plc control but on the market you can buy from uh, most of the um, uh, transformer uh, protection and control uh, device manufacturer um, a compact solution from mr from mesco qualitrol and uh, they can uh, be programmed and they can almost cover uh, all the functions that I mentioned before. So they can monitor the temperature of the transformer. They can switch on and off the coolers uh, based on uh, uh, preset uh, cooling stages. They can uh, monitor the winding temperature by simulating the uh, 
the, the winding temperature based on the oil temperature and the loading uh, condition of the transformer. They can detect a fault by measuring the, the currents uh, uh, with an external CT in the uh, cooling circuit. And they can also monitor the auxiliary contacts of the protector uh, devices, as well as the oil flow indicators. So they can manage the, uh, the spare uh, cooler switching on and off. Uh, they are all uh, provided with exercising mode. So time by time, if the cooler is not uh, used, will be operated for a short time to avoid uh, stacking in the, the, the bearings. Uh, they can be remotely and locally uh, controlled and the indication of the, temp the measured temperatures can be also monitored from a re remote uh, location and they can communicate uh, together with monitoring devices or the substation uh, supervision system as well. So at the end or around the end of my uh, uh, presentation, I would like to, uh, to answer uh, those questions that I received before uh, the session. So if a transformer is operated on lower ambient temperature than the, than the design, uh, they can be overloaded. In, in this example, uh, you can see uh, two lines. These lines uh, are determined from the uh, losses of the transformer, for example, the, the, the load loss of the transformer is, uh, is increasing by the second power of the, of the loading or the uh, loading current of the transformer. And um, we also have to consider the no load loss of the transformer, which is constant, in, uh, independent from the loading condition of the transformer. So considering these two components, uh, we can see at uh, which load level, what will be the the total loss of the transformer, which becomes heat under the oil. And uh, uh, based on the uh, results of the temperature rise test of the transformer, we can calculate what are the, the possible overloads uh, at uh, different temperatures. For example, this transformer was designed for 40 degree um, um, uh, ambient temperature, but the uh, measured temperature rises are uh, less than the guaranteed or the maximum temperature rises. So even at 40 degree temperature, we can load the transformer with 105% of its rated power in order to uh, keep the hotspot uh, temperatures uh, within 98 degrees Celsius, which is a requirement by IEC 60076-7, the loading guide standard of uh, liquid inverse uh, power transformers. Um, and uh, at this ambient temperature, the transformer can be uh, overloaded uh, for a short time, uh, where we allow maximum 120 degree uh, hotspot temperature. In this case, the overloading can be almost 130%. And uh, if the ambient temperature is less than the design ambient temperature, so less than 40 degree, for example, 30 or 20, we can, eat, uh, we can let the transformer to be uh, overloaded even more and more, but there is the, uh, the, the pink line here, which is the, the maximum current limit uh, according to this uh, IEC standard at 130 degree. Uh, that means, uh, however, the insulation of the transformer would not be exceeded uh, the, uh, uh, the, the maximum allowable temperature. There are some components like the built-in current transformers, the top changer, the bushing, which are carrying also current and they uh, should not be uh, loaded by more than 130% uh, uh, of, the, of the transformer. So this kind of graph, this kind of calculation can be provided to any of our products uh, based on the temperature rise uh, result. And that can guide the operator uh, to, to let the transformer overload with the lower ambient temperatures. And some words about the thermal image uh, winding temperature indicator. So as I said, the, the sensor is not touching the winding, but it is still hanging in the, in the thermometer pocket and it's measure, it measures the top oil uh, temperature. But based on the temperature rise uh, uh, results, we will know what is the gradient between the top oil temperature uh, of the transformer and the top winding temperature and this uh, or the hotspot winding temperature and this gradient uh, so the difference between the uh, temperature of the hottest spot of the winding and the top 
oil depends always on the load of the transformer. Of course, if the transformer is not loaded at all, then the top of the winding will have the same temperature as the top of the oil. If the transformer is fully loaded, there will be a full gradient. And this proportional difference can be simulated by uh, supplying a heating resistor in the thermometer from the secondary circuit of the current transformer, which will provide a load um, uh, proportional signal and will cause an extra uh, heating in the, in the thermometer. And in our design, it is realized according to, to, to this sketch. So we have a winding temperature indicator where the capillary tube is hanging in the oil. And uh, there is an additional heating element in the thermometer, which is supplied from the secondary current of the current transformer, which uh, uh, heats the heating resistor by a load proportional, load proportional uh, heating current. Um, and uh, this system will only uh, uh, um, uh, provide us uh, a reliable uh, winding uh, temperature indication if this is calibrated. So during the factory uh, acceptance test, when we uh, know what is the gradient of the transformer, uh, we uh, do a kind of uh, uh, setting, okay, not setting, but setting and the testing of WTI by injecting the uh, corresponding current in the thermometer and there is a current divider realized by a, a potentiometer and by changing the value of the potentiometer the ratio between the heating current and the divider current can be set and the necessary gradient can be adjusted uh, uh, based on the measurements and the design. So this is what I wanted to tell you uh, today. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if there is still remaining time, uh, I will try to answer your question. And as I said, the remaining questions which cannot be answered today will be answered by email uh, after the session. So thanks for your uh, attention and I'm waiting for the questions. Thank you, Balas, for providing so much detail in such a short time. 